After going through Gauss Jordan Elimination, what you're going to find is a diagonal form. And the diagonal form can look different depending on how the elimination works. If you look at these three different uh, examples here, these are the three different ways diagonal form can turn out. The first diagonal form is the nicest. You have exactly one solution and you can read it directly off of what the matrix says. In this case, the first variable is 4, the second one is 7, and the third one is negative 3. With the second matrix here, we have this last row and everything canceled to leave us with zeros. So if I write that in terms of the variables, I have 0x plus 0y plus 0z has to equal the right hand side, the 0 0.8. But 0 times anything is 0, so what we're saying is 0 has to equal 0.8, which can't happen. Because this is impossible, if our diagonal form looks like this, we have a row of zeros and then something else after the line, we end up with no solutions. It's also possible to end up in this last case, where we have a row of zeros, but on the other side of the line is also a zero. If I write this in terms of the variables, I get 0x plus 0y plus 0z has to equal zero, or zero equals zero. And there's no problem with this actually happening. So in this case, what we have is infinitely many solutions. I'll show you in a second how to write down solutions that look like this. Infinitely many means we have too many. We can't write them all down, so we'll need a special form. So here's the last example. The 1, 3, 0, negative 2, 0, 0, 1, 5, and then a row of zeros. When this happens, we have no way of getting rid of this 3. So we call this type of column a free variable. This corresponds to the y in our particular example. So we're going to let y be a free variable. Then we can read off the solutions. This last row here tells me that z has to equal 5, and so that's fine. The first row will give me an equation both in terms of x and y. If I write this down, it says that x plus 3y plus 0z, so that's not there, is equal to negative 2. The reason I make y a free variable is that I have no way of writing down y by itself. So I'm going to allow y to be anything that I want it to be, hence the word free. This will give us a way of generating all of the solutions. If I pick y to be 1 or y to be 7, I'm going to get a solution for each of those choices of y. Once I know which variable I'm choosing to be free, I solve all of the other variables in terms of the free variables. And so instead of writing my solution like I already have it written, I'm going to rewrite it so that it looks slightly different. In particular, the z is going to equal 5, and that's, there's no changing that. But my x, I'm going to write it in terms of y. So solve it for x, and I get x equals negative 2 minus 3y. Then I can write down my full set of solutions. I'm going to write it down in terms of the free variable. My solutions are going to be the form z equals 5, y is free, so y can be anything. I can make a choice for y and I'll get a solution. And then x is negative 2 minus 3y. These are all of the solutions. If I want a particular solution, all I have to do is make a choice for y. So for example, if I want one solution, I could maybe choose y equals, mm, I don't know, let's choose y equal 2, because why not? y could really be anything. In this case, my x is going to be negative 2 minus 3 times 2, so minus 2 minus 6, or negative 8. And so this one solution that corresponds to y equals 2 is going to be x is negative 8, y is 2, and z is 5. Any choice of y leads to one solution.